Okay. So I guess we'll just go ahead and start. So hello, everyone. Thank you for coming today. And welcome to our event, Interview Prep with Centene. Um, we have a lot planned for today. So we're just going to go straight into it. So to begin with, Girls Who Code is an organization here at UNC Charlotte. It's a national organization, but we're one of the chapters. And basically, we aim to uplift and maintain a strong community of female students in computer science, as well as provide different resources for them to develop technical and professional skills that they will need in the tech industry. So although our organization does say Girls Who Code, our club is indeed open to everyone and anyone who is looking to learn more about computer science, um, expand their skills, or support our cause. So some of the resources we offer are um, workshops, professional panels, outreach events, and definitely a lot more. So we've been quite busy this semester pushing all those events out. Um, if you haven't been to one of our events yet, this is our e-board for this year. And I'll turn it over to Elise to begin our introductions. Thank you, Kelsey, and welcome everyone to our Centene event. We're so glad that each and every one of you were able to make it out today. Um, my name is Elise Frazier. I'm president of Girls Who Code. I currently major in computer science with a concentration in data science and minor in business. And um, it's been wonderful working with Girls Who Code this year, and I can't wait what we come up with next. And thank you. Um, hi, everyone. Again, I'm Kelsey. So I'm the vice president for Girls Who Code. Um, I concentrate in software engineering and I'll be graduating this semester, so that's exciting. And I'll turn it over to Chanel. Thank you, Kelsey. Hi, everybody. My name is Chanel Briggs and I'm the treasurer. I am concentrating in cybersecurity and minoring in math. And I am getting my master's in the early uh, entry program in uh, cybersecurity as well. And I'll give it to Ayushi. Hello, I'm Ayushi, so I'm the Member Involvement Chair. Um, I'm also kind of like Chanel. I'm all, also uh, majoring in computer science, but um, my concentration is in cybersecurity. Uh, my minor is in bioinformatics. So it's a lot of coding all the time, which I did not know what, which route I was going to. I was like, I think it'll be something cool. I'm kind of interested in biology, but also a little bit of in computer science. I was like, it'll be a nice mash, uh, mashup to do, which is pretty fun so far. Um, I'm also part of the early entry master's program as well. So I'm also doing my master's in cybersecurity currently. It's going, that's what I'll say. So if you guys, anyone, uh, students have any questions regarding how the process goes, just let me know. Um, we, like in about like, I think five, 10 minutes, I'm gonna send out a form in the chat for attendance. So anyone who is, please make sure you go and fill that form out, but that's me. Caitlin is not with, um, here with us at the moment. She's currently in a class. She'll be here soon. Her class ends around 5.20. So she's like, I want to make it. So she'll do her best to make it, uh, make it in a few minutes. But that's her. And I'll pass it on to Ash. Hey, everyone. Oh. Got to unmute first. There we go. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Ashley, um, or you could call me Ash. I got my bachelor's in cybersecurity and I am currently studying uh, human-computer interaction for my master's, and I am the web and media chair here at Girls Who Code. And so that is our amazing Girls Who Code eboard. They've been all working really hard, and we look forward to creating more events for you guys too. We also have three amazing Centene representatives here with us today. Each of them have taken time out of their schedule to attend this event and help out, so we truly appreciate you guys being here. Um, if you want to go ahead and briefly introduce yourselves, starting with Mackenzie, um, that would be great. Hi, everyone. I am Mackenzie. I'm here from Centene today. Um, I am an application software engineer. I have been in the industry for about five years now. Um, I'm considered a full stack de developer, so I do pretty much everything from uh, raw data, data lake, all the way through um, predictive modeling and analytics. Um, I did my undergrad in business economics and somehow ended up as a, a full stack developer. So, um, so yeah, I'm so excited to be here today. I'll go next. So I'm Pamela Baum. I am also with Centene. I've uh, been with Centene for about almost four years now. 
Um, I work in HR on our university relations team along with Brian, um, and we essentially um, partner with university organizations like you guys um, and bring talent into Centene um, from the early talent level into our internship program as well as into um, assist with more entry level roles as well. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Brian Tiefenbrook. I'm the Canvas Brand Specialist. Uh, I'll just kind of say ditto for what uh, I do alongside Pamela. Uh, we work on the same team. Uh, a lot of it is campus strategy and kind of figuring out what our biggest areas of needs are and uh, finding the institutions and different groups to uh, support them and uh, moving forward with finding internships and kind of on the entry level positions for us. So uh, thank you all for, for having us. I really appreciate, we, are, we all really appreciate the opportunity and the chance to, to speak with you all tonight. So thank you guys again for being here. And now that we've kind of all introduced ourselves, um, we can finally begin with the main focus, our event, which was the interview prep and learning more about Centene. So I'll go ahead and pass it back to you, Brian, to um, begin the Centene presentation. All right. So I will, I guess, start sharing my screen. Um. Okay. Well, again, thank you everybody for attending. Um, I've already did, gone through introductions, um, so that, that takes care of that piece. Um, basically, we're, I'm going to keep this pretty brief. I'm going to help teach you guys a little about what Centene is, uh, who we are, what we do, um, some opportunities that are available to you, uh, and what you can do in order to get yourself into consideration for those. And then we're going to move on to the skills, uh, I guess the skills workshop, where you guys are going to talk about interviewing stuff, uh, and you're going to hear from us and kind of work on some of those skills moving forward and things like that. So, all right. Uh, so, sending a glance, we are committed to providing meaningful, high-quality health care to every member that we serve. Uh, we are a diversified, multinational Fortune 25 organization uh, committed to transferring, transforming the health of the community one person at a time. Uh, with roughly 68,000 diverse and dedicated employees uh, providing health care services uh, to more than 25 million members across all 50 states, uh, we are the largest Medicaid managed care organization in the country and the national leader in managed long-term services and supports, as well as the number one insurer in the nation on the health insurance marketplace. Uh, we actually serve one in 15 individuals across the United States. Um, so the ultimate foundation of everything we do at Centene is our purpose, transforming the health of the community one person at a time. Uh, our three brand pillars further highlight what sets us apart as a company. Uh, these pillars are based on the foundational beliefs of the company in that we must treat the whole person, not just the physical body, uh, treating people with kindness, respect, and dignity empowers healthy decisions. Uh, we have a responsibility to remove barriers and make it simple to get well, stay well, and be well. And healthier individuals create more vibrant families and communities. Centene really stands apart from other organizations based on the unique combination of our purpose, mission, pillars, and core beliefs. And our foundational beliefs and the dedicated entre entrepreneurial spirit of our employees uh, has definitely helped us to achieve a lot of success. So, Looking back just a few years from now, it feels like feels like such a long time ago, uh, but 2018, pre-pandemic, uh, we had set forth uh, our 2020 vision to be the leader of government-sponsored healthcare. Uh, we achieved our, our goal and exceeded the target of $80 billion in total revenue and have become the largest company in Medicaid, long-term services and support, um, healthcare marketplace, and correctional, or correctional healthcare. So for our 2025 vision, uh, our current goal is to be the partner of choice for connecting communities uh, with government-sponsored health solutions across the globe. Uh, there are several important components to this vision. Uh, partner of choice serves as our desire to continue operating the highest levels of quality, consistency, and effectiveness for our members, providers, and government partners. Uh, connecting communities embodies our purpose to transform the health of the communities we serve. Uh, we remain committed and focused on government-sponsored health solutions, and we are looking to continue to expand internationally. Um, I know that we are current; that we do have health plans, or we, we do healthcare for the United, uh, the UK, Spain, and I always forget the third one. Uh, for some reason, I think it's in South America. I'm, I'm going to ask my colleagues if they know what it is. Do either of you guys remember the third one? <laughs> Sorry, I'm putting you on the spot. Slovakia. Sorry? Slovakia. That's because that's in South America. Yeah, nice job, Brian. Um, yes, Slovakia. Thank you, Pamela. Appreciate that. All right. So a little bit about of, of our, our diverse workforce, um, helping you guys kind of learn a little more about us. Uh, our workforce 
uh, reflects the community that we serve. We engage diverse talent across the organization, preparing employees for leadership roles and hiring diverse candidates uh, who have a passion for serving our members. Uh, in total, approximately 75% of sentencing employees are female, and more than 50% of, of our employees identify as a minority. Uh, Sentine, we value diversity of thought and experiences, uh, which is driven through our strategic priorities of provider education, community engagement, supplier diversity, and a diverse workforce. Uh, as we look to the future and strengthening our delivery of culturally competent care, we know we have to continue nurturing a workplace that supports and empowers all employees to be heard, respected, and appreciated. Uh, we continuously strive uh, to be a great place to work for all and are proud to consistently rank among the best for our diversity and inclusion practices. Uh, we're actually among the top scorers in the Human Rights Campaign Corporate Equality Index, as well as the Disability Equality Index, sponsored by the United States Business Leadership Network and the American Association of People with Disabilities. Uh, additionally, our Centene Chairman, President and CEO, Michael Meidorf, was one of the first to sign on to the CEO Action for Diversity and Inclusion Pledge. And we're also proud of our national partners that bring unique expertise and networks that accelerate our growth through exposure to diverse talent. Uh, as team, we embrace the role as a good corporate citizen, recognize the importance of its investments in the people and communities that we have welcomed Centene as a neighbor by addressing social determinants of health for our members, including food, shelter, employment, and education, uh, and supporting the communities in which our members live through various volunteer opportunities and by participating in community programs. So uh, what's next? I'm, I'm sure you're all excited about working with Centene at this point. Oh, excuse me, I just left, left the... Uh, uh, the, the full the full screen, but that's all right. Um, next, th next thing is where you're going to find all of our opportunities at jobs.centene.com. This is where you're going to find all of our internship opportunities, uh, as well as full-time opportunities for those of you that are looking for those. Um, that is where you're going to have to go to apply for all our positions. I know there may be some positions posted on Simplicity's web site uh, for uh, internship positions for the summer. Uh, but I know that ultimately you will have to go to our website to find them, and that can be found at jobs.centene.com. Um, there you can always find out more information about our organization, uh, what we are doing in the Charlotte area, as well as different opportunities that are of interest, and apply for positions. Um, I'd love to stay in, stay in contact with all of you. Uh, if you have any questions after this, I know that uh, kind of, we're kind of flying through a lot of information about Centene, uh, so you are all more than welcome to write down my email address, um, Pamela and Mackenzie, they are, they're also more than welcome to answer any questions that you guys may have, um, whether it's about the application process. I would suggest probably you want to talk to Pamela or myself. Um, Mackenzie, I'm going to put all the technical questions to you. Um, so you're definitely the expert on everything and that's on that side, but um, we'd love to answer any questions you may have uh, regarding applications or things like that. Before we move on, do, does anybody have any questions about Centene, what we do, or anything like that? Brian, I wanted to tell everyone, we have um, posted on our website 111 um, internship positions for summer 2022 um, in our Centene Technologies group. And they range from anything um, mostly software developer related roles, uh, but we have data analytics, machine learning, um, cyber. I know a couple of the ladies on, on the board mentioned cybersecurity. Um, so a lot of different possibilities for candidates. Sorry, I muted myself. And I know a lot of these positions are actually going to be in the Charlotte area. In fact, I would probably say the majority of them are gonna be in the Charlotte area. Um, I know that for internships, I believe, Pamela, correct me if I'm wrong, these are likely going to be virtual again this year. Uh, that hasn't become uh, official, uh, I, though <laughs> I don't think anybody has really been able to predict COVID-19 to this point. So um, fingers crossed that we are in person, but there is the, the strong possibility that we will be uh, virtual again. Um, any questions about Centene, what we do, who we are? feel enough like, like enough to be dangerous now if, if someone were to ask you about us <laughs> that's really what I'm going for so all right uh, well let's move into uh, the interview skills and tips um, Mackenzie Pamela again I'm I'm opening this up to you guys as well if you feel there's something else you want to jump in or elaborate on please I am I'm open to sharing with this so um, 
basically this is kind of broken down into a lot of things you can do prior to or you want to do prior to the start of an interview, um, maybe the day before, hours before, uh, as well as even after. So uh, first and foremost, arrive early for your interview. Uh, it doesn't take any effort to be, er to be early. Um, it doesn't take any skills or anything like that, just directions to where you're going. So um, the night before, take or night before, two, two nights before, whenever you feel, or you're, you're getting ready for your interview, um, take a look at it on Google Maps, see how long it takes to get there and make sure you have an address. Um, it's okay if you arrive 30 minutes early. I know you're saying, like, Brian, that's crazy. Like, okay, you don't have to, you don't have to go in, you don't have to go into the building for, for a while. You can always just kind of send your car and, and go over your resume, uh, prepare for the position, uh, find some other things you're looking to do. Um, but do not be late. Um, I've had some colleagues that have worked in, in that, uh, I guess the hiring capacity and, and arriving late to an interview is, is no, is no good way to make a first impression. So, um, make sure that you are arriving early, you know, 10, 15 minutes before, and you can go kind of go inside and talk and, and figure out when your interview is going to be. So, um, or wait for your interview. Uh, number two, uh, ensuring you're well-dressed and well-groomed. Um, for me, it takes me less than five minutes for my hair to be ready. I understand that I'm kind of a unique person when it comes to that. Um, so if that's preparation for the night before or things like that, um, that was is something I would recommend you, you take it, take advantage of or, or start prepping as well. Um, well-dressed and well-groomed, you know, you're obviously going to be interviewing for a professional uh, position. So uh, for, for me, it'd be a suit and tie. Um, Mackenzie, Pamela, I, I, I will kind of leave it to you as to what's, what you guys would typically wear for an interview. Um, so for me, I typically dress um, business professional, which for me is typically a like a pencil skirt, a blazer, and then a, um, you know, whatever top is appropriate underneath. Yes, I'll concur with Mackenzie. <laughs> there you have it. There you have it. Um, you know, obviously make sure that, you know, that you're taking care of these things prior to the, to, uh, the start of your interview. Um, go over your clothes few days before check to make sure there aren't you know excess threads or any holes or things like that sometimes it happens if you haven't worn a suit in a while or, or a coat maybe a moth have gotten into it during the during the winter I, it's happened I, I, I'm serious um, so just kind of go over through some of those details um, researching the organization make sure you know a little about uh, what the organization does uh, prior to the interview um, that way if somebody says like why would you want to work here tell me a little about that um, you can certainly speak to it and kind of say, like, okay, I, I noticed you guys have been in the news, any kind of things like that. Those are going to be questions you're going to um, possibly want to know a little about. Um, practicing answers to common interview questions. A lot of times I'll, I'll always ask students at uh, career fairs, you know, tell me about yourself. You know, what, what is it that, uh, that interests you about this, this organization? A lot of it can just be an elevator, elevator speech that maybe you have you know, that lasts for 30 seconds uh, just to talk a little about who you are, your background why you're interested in, in this place, but you know, it does really practice makes perfect. Um, I know it may kind of sound stupid to sit in your room and kind of answer some of these questions, but it is different to read and memorize an answer versus just to practice it and say it out loud. Um, if you've ever given an oral presentation, uh, it is different to kind of just say it out loud and kind of time yourself versus kind of like, okay, I know at this point, this point, this point, I, I, I think I got to handle it. It really is. Um, so just kind of getting as comfortable as possible with responding to questions that will make you um, much more, I guess, much, uh, much more polished moving forward. Uh, during the interview, a couple things here: keeping your answers concise and focused. Um, brief briefness is always something that is appreciated. Uh, I know that you know after a long-winded answer, even though I know you want to have a ton of details and give every little specific uh, item that's going on. Um, sometimes it's best to kind of keep things focused uh, and direct. After you know a minute, minute and a half people's attention can start to wander um, and moving on from there. So I, again, I, I Pamela threw this one out. He's using the, the, uh, the star method, uh, situation, task, action, result. Uh, what was going on? What were you, what, what was your job? What did you do? Um, how did you implement this? Uh, what was, what actions did you take and what was the result? So I know it can be hard to, to work that in with all your, a lot of different interview questions and responses, but it's a great thing to use during an interview. Um, the other thing is avoid speaking neg negatively about previous employers. Um, I understand we've all probably had a, a crummy job in the past or worked for a boss that was a real pain. Um, 
but you're in, an, in a job interview. It's important to remain professional. You're not uh, in a session where you're, you're there to gripe about, uh, you know, wow, they didn't promote me to this position or oh, my boss was a jerk and made me work on a Saturday. And like, we've all been there. We know it, it sucks. It sucks. Um, but try to just try to keep those positions in a positive light. You know, I'm looking for more opportunities. I think there's, there's more opportunities available in this area. Um, I'd like to get more in, into uh, this part of work versus I, this is the opportunity that I have here. Um, so again, avoid speaking negatively about the previous employers, um, preparing a few questions for the interviewer, make sure that you have some things you want to discuss with them. A lot of this can simply be, you know, what are some things you like about this, this company? What do you not like about this company? What are some of the challenges of this position? Those are questions that you're going to want to know, um, prior to accepting a role within, within, uh, an organization. Um, it also just kind of shows you're, you're thinking about this job and what are some things that, you know, are, it kind of shows like, okay, while we're talking and having this conversation, this person's actually uh, kind of the wheels are turning. They're trying to figure out a little bit more as to whether this is really going to be a good fit for them. Um, knowing your resume. Uh, this is kind of a pet peeve of mine. Um, I personally just kind of, I guess, it's, yeah, I'll keep it as a pet peeve. Uh, if you put something on your resume and I ask you about it or an interviewer asks you about it, uh, that is fair game. So if you kind of, if I was to say like, I noticed that you're, you know, you have experience working with Java here and you didn't anticipate to put that on your resume or you didn't put it on your resume uh, or you didn't mean to put it on your resume. Well, it's there now. So I get to ask you about it. So just make sure that you know your resume, you know, the details of the previous positions you've worked with, uh, things you've done, all sorts of things like that. Um, honesty and authenticity. Uh, interviewers really do appreciate that. Um, and, you know, I, I will say that most of us that work on the HR field kind of take a little bit of pride in ourselves as being, I would say people, pe people per, um, have good personal skills, I guess that's a good way to say, <laughs> good way to say it. Um, but we can kind of tell when somebody's kind of faking some things. And I would really strongly suggest uh, that you use your honesty and authenticity, being a genuine person. Um, that way, when you do kind of get in, into a role, it's not this kind of Jekyll and Hyde thing. Well, we interviewed this person and this bright, bubbly person was here. And now that they have this role, they're extremely gloomy or, or uh, always kind of angry with the world. You know, be your authentic self. You know, if uh, practice your honesty and authenticity. So uh, last thing, post, post interviews, um, follow up with the, your interviewer or some of the employees that you may have met. You welcome to collect business cards. Um, that way you have their email act, email addresses and can follow up with them saying, you know, Hey, it was great speaking with you yesterday. I really am excited about this position. I think this, uh, my skills in X, Y, Z would be a great, uh, great tools moving forward. Um, I think that would be, uh, that'd be, I'd be a great fit for this position. And yeah, those are the 11, 11 skills and tips that, that we came up with. Um, I guess I'll, I'll turn it to my colleagues. Do you, anything that you guys wanted to, um, uh, explain a little bit more or cover a little bit further? Sure. So I had one of the things I want to circle back to, especially from a technical perspective, is the keeping your answers concise and focused and the STAR method. So I know one of the things that I've seen over and over and I myself have fallen um, prey to this is people who are super, super passionate about their work and they clearly have a ton of awesome experience but they're not able to roll their work up to a level of detail that's understandable to someone who was not also doing the project with them or works outside of the company. So in that situation, I personally practice on my mom. Uh, my mother is a physical therapist. She does not know what I do for a living. So um, if I can explain a project I'm doing to her and she gets the gist of it, um, then I know I'm ready to go. Um, the second thing that I also want to bring up that I think is really, really important in the interview process and one of the easiest things to forget is that an interview is a two way street. Make sure when you're going through your interview that you're also thinking about um, the culture of the company. You're thinking about the experience that you are having with your interviewer. For instance, I can remember a time where I had um, the guy was just extremely rude during the interview. Um, 
And I ended up taking the job, didn't pay attention to any of the red flags, and they all carried through into the prior role. So make sure you're paying attention. I know it's really, really easy to get wrapped up in, oh my gosh, am I presenting myself well? Do they like me? But make sure you remember that um, you are going to have to be here from eight to five. Make sure that's exactly what you want. I think that's a great point. Uh, just because you have a job offer does not mean you have to take it. You, know, you guys are all very talented individuals um, in, a very, in a high demand field. So just remember that when you are interviewing with an organization. Any questions about this? I think we did have a few questions that were sent on our registration form kind of about Centene and interviewing tips. Um, so we have a little bit of time for questions. Um, Elise, if you want to start with the first question that was on that list. Yeah, of course. So one question that was requested is, are there opportunities such as internships available for computer science graduate students? And if so, how do people apply and what skills are expected from them? can take this one. Uh, so we do have graduate student opportunities. Um, most of our opportunities are at the undergraduate level, but we do have um, probably around, I want to say about 25 positions that are targeted for graduate students. And um, you can apply on our website, um, which Brian had in the presentation. And I think you guys will get a copy of this. I can put it in the chat even right now. I couldn't put it in. I was just about to do, oh, now, now you can. It was disabled for me, but there you go. So Brian just put it in the chat and um, that's where you can go and look for um, our graduate level internships. And what I would say for both undergrad and graduate is like, we don't expect you to have expertise in you know, in, in different technologies necessarily. We would want you to have some skills in, in those areas, um, but I think it's really more um, some of those technical skills. And at the graduate level, we would expect you to have maybe a higher level of skills than at an undergraduate, um, but it's not going to be the only thing that we're looking at. We're looking at like, um, do you have the drive? Are you collaborative? Um, because we do work as, as teams. We're a very collaborative organization. Um, so all of those other skills as well, communication, um, are just as important. And, um, I would say like you want those aspects to shine through along with giving examples of, of technical skills as well. Great. Thank you, Pamela, for your answer. That is definitely very important. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, one more question we do have that we wanted to ask is, what characteristics and skills do you value most in employees? Um, someone who's excited to learn. That's my number one. Um, when I'm interviewing people, um, I don't honestly, I don't really care if you have the tool skill sets that we use. Um, I just want you to be excited about learning. Um, and I want to see examples of um, how you learned a skill you needed very quickly in the past. I, I would say I, I, I would agree with that. Um, definitely somebody who's not afraid to take on a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Centene is a big organization, and healthcare isn't exactly the most straightforward uh, field. Um, you know, I've been here for a little over three years, and I still feel like I'm learning new things about the company. Um, so, I mean, it's okay to not understand everything that's going on, uh, but to be making an effort for that and really kind of like saying, like, all right, you know, this is something I've I've done right before, but you know, I'm I'm willing to learn and, and kind of take on that challenge. I think that kind of goes into what uh, Mackenzie was just talking about. Yeah, and I'll add being proactive to that as well, which which is similar to what Brian and Mackenzie were saying, um, because I think the more proactive you are, the more you're going to learn, the more you're going to understand things. Um, I've heard from our IT leaders, you know, they can teach you skill, the technical skills, um, but you can't really teach somebody to, you know, take initiative and be proactive and um, do all of those types of things. 
thank you guys so much for those answers. Um, they're definitely really insightful. And because sometimes I feel like the technical skills are the most important, but it's definitely good to have that feedback. So I know what to focus on more. <laughs> but um, I think that's all the time we have for questions right now. If your question was not answered, I'm very sorry, um, but you guys can definitely reach out to them and we'll be sharing their information after this meeting. But with that, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen so that we can get to the interview practice part. So let me see. So before we get our interview practice, we're kind of doing it in a very unique way. Um, so I'll let Elise kind of explain how we're handling this. Yes, of course. Thank you, Kelsey. So basically with this interview practice, um, Kelsey will basically set up different breakout rooms and students, you will all be placed in a breakout room with a Centene representative. And basically they will be given already interview questions that will be commonly asked in the real interview process. So this is kind of more practice with mock interviews. So during this time, they'll ask you questions to practice that process. So you'll be better prepared for that in the future when you do have interviews like this. And also definitely feel free when you do have time after you're done practicing to even ask some more questions about Centene and further questions about the interview process. But that is basically what this interview practice will be. And if it does come up, um, and this is for Centene representatives as well, if you do, do need more time or if there's any technical issues, you can use the ask for help feature in Zoom. It should be somewhere on your tab on Zoom, um, but definitely let us know if you need help with that feature. And Kelsey should be um, actually making the breakout rooms now. So when those are done, she'll, I think it should show up on your screen to join one of the breakout rooms. Just click that and then you can begin your interview practice. And also we just wanna make note, like if you're comfortable as well, if you could please turn your camera just so that our Centene representatives are not talking to a blank screen, that would definitely be really great. And plus we do wanna to get to know you guys better too. So if you're comfortable, yeah, please turn on your cameras. Um, but I think, the rooms are now open. And like Elise said, if you have any questions, um, just click the ask for help button and we will be there. Hello everyone, welcome back. Um, I hope that your interview practice went well and I'm sure that you guys learned a lot of new information and lots of new tips and tricks for interviews. But before we kind of close out this event, um, we just wanted to know, were there any tips and tricks that stood out to you that you think the rest of the group should know or would be helpful for everyone to know? Like what went well, that kind of stuff. And also feel free to unmute yourselves and just speak up if you wanna share something. <laughs> I think in the um, comment section, Nicole said, practice, 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 which is, I'll agree to that one as myself. <laughs> yes, definitely. Even the representatives, if you guys want, if you guys want to share anything, feel free to. Um, I absolutely agree with the practice, practice, practice. I think um, the more time that you can spend uh, talking about those uh, more soft skills in a professional setting, uh, so communication, organization, um, problem solving, the better off you will be when it comes to doing an interview for an internship or a full-time role. Yeah, and I, I recommend, I don't know if your career center has um, a software program where you can practice, like have, um, a mock interview practice, or like usually they'll work with volunteers like us and um, to do them as well. So I would recommend um, participating in all of those types of things as part of your practice. And I usually mention that you do, so. <laughs> yeah, we definitely do have um, mock interview practice at our career center. Definitely take advantage of that. So that would be great. But um, thank you guys for coming. I guess this is the end of our event, but before you go, we do have a few announcements and we would love to take a picture at the end, but I'll go ahead 
and pass it to Ayushi so she can explain our upcoming events. All right, I'm back. Um, so we have a few upcoming events. We have one that's built the chat box, which will be on the 21st from 6 to 7. So you'll be building one with Python and you don't need any experience. So come in, we'll teach you everything you need to know. I think which is a pretty good start. Um, I know with Python, as far as I know, within bioinformatics, we don't start until Python until then with the concentration. But if you're not in the concentration, you don't start until your 3000 level class for Python. So I think this is a great start to come in and check it out. Um, another one, we have like a social event, which will be a game night, uh, which is on 27th from 6 to 7. We'll be doing a virtual Pictionary. So I think it'll be fun to get to know you guys um, and you get to know us as well. So please do join us. These are the two upcoming. We have a few more events coming up in the future, but these are the most recent ones. So we would love to see your faces. Once again, thank you all for being here. And of course, thank you, Brian, Mackenzie, and Pamela for assisting with this event. We really do appreciate you being here and this event would not have been possible without your support. And we look forward to partnering with you guys again in the future for more events. And for our members and students, we look forward to seeing you guys for our upcoming events as well. But with that said, everyone take care and have a good night. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.